Hey, Nick, you know who my favorite student is? Uh, Ann Serkey, because she gets everything right. Absolutely. So, stuff I can throw at you. Uh, by the way, my basketball players need to talk to me later on about when they want to write the test. They may choose to write it later on in this class or after school or tomorrow after school. Uh, what is the velocity? Okay, they want three different objects. I'll divide this into three chunks. And they want V final. Uh, I didn't leave you much room. I meant to photocopy this onto a big page instead of half a page and half a page. Anyhow, I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do for all of these is I'm going to use VF equals V initial plus AT. Oh, but since I'm dropping it, Roy, I'm pretty sure I can do that. So for all of these, it's just going to be the acceleration, negative 9.8 times the time. It's going to be the acceleration times the time. It's going to be the acceleration, oh, not 4, Mr. Duke, times the time. And I've used negative 9.8 so much, I've kind of memorized my negative 9.8 times table because it physics. Negative uh, 19.6, yes? Meters per second. Negative uh, 39.2 meters per second. And this is going to be at another 19 point, uh, 58, negative 58.8. Uh, if you went to two sig figs, uh, negative 20, negative 39, and negative 59, but I wasn't fussy. One mark for each of those. Number two, how long does it take a freely falling object to reach each of these velocities? Okay, again, I'll divide it into three. Uh, this time they're asking me to find time. And they're giving me V final. Oh, and in free fall, unless they say different race, we assume the initial is zero. I think I can use this. T equals V final minus V initial all over A. But as a matter of fact, V initial is zero. So it's just going to be V final over A, I think. It's going to be negative 24.5 over negative 9.8. It's going to be negative 88.2 all over negative 9.8, and it's going to be negative 63.7 all over negative 9.8. Let's see. Negative 24.5 divided by negative 9.8. 2.5 seconds for the first one. By the way, if you get answers that are nice, that's how you can tell Mr. Kamozi made up the question. If you get answers that are yucky, that's how you can tell I made up the question because I don't care about you guys enough to try and work out questions that work out nice. I just don't. He's better at math in his head than me by a long shot. Uh, 9.0 or 9. So this quiz was made up by Mr. Kamozi, except for the CN Tower question. I added that because that one doesn't work out nice. I don't think it does. Maybe it does. can't remember. Uh, Negative 63.7 divided by negative 9.8. 6.5 seconds. How far does a freely falling object? So now they want how far. I think I'm going to use this. Although since VI is 0, since we're dropping, I can do that. Physics 12, Sean, what we'll start to ask is what if VI is not zero? And specifically, what we'll ask later on this year, if, what if instead of launching straight up, you launch at an angle? Now what? What if you, which, which is a much more realistic question. Artillery projectile is really what we're doing the math for. And it turns out to be not too bad. Uh, one second, that's going to be D equals 0.5, negative 9.8 times 1 squared, that I can do in my head, negative 4.9 uh, meters. If you left the negative off, that's fine, because I didn't say, tell me the displacement. I said how far, which could be a distance, or it could be a displacement, Chris. I don't know. So I'll take either. Two seconds, that's going to be d equals 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 2 squared. Uh, 2 squared is 4. Uh, uh, negative 39.2? No, half of that. Negative 19.6? I'm running out of room. Right underneath Mr. Duke. 
negative 19.6 meters. And again, you could say positive. Question, Nick, twitch? Just feel like scratching your neck? Okay. The CN Tower. Any of you been to the top of the CN Tower? I never have. I'd like to. You have? Is it a fairly impressive view? Yeah? Can you see the curvature of the Earth? Can you tell that the Earth is curving away from you from that height yet? No? Okay. I've, I've wondered. That's one of the things as a nerd that I would look for. Uh, how long would it take a rock dropped from the top to reach the ground? What are they asking me to find here? Time. I, I'm pretty sure, <coughs> excuse me, I'm pretty sure, Cole, that I can use this but get the t by itself. Still, vi is zero. So if I get the t by itself, I would times by two, divide by a, and then square root. I think I'm going to use this. It's going to be the square root of two times 533.3 divided by negative 9.8. And if I do this, I find I'm wrong. If I go 2 times 533.3 divided by negative 9.8, and then I say, I'm going to take the square root of this, I get an error. Why? How come? Well, times a scalar, but what's the problem here? What's a negative? Yeah, OK, I got a negative square. Why? What have I done wrong here? I've entered a wrong value. OK, what do I know? What's this 533.3? Is it that? It's not. Are you ending up above or below from where you started? Hint, hint for your test on Thursday. Hint, hint if you're dropping an object. Hint, hint. Are you ending up above or below from where you started? Then I better call that negative. And that's why I got an error. What I needed to do was put a negative displacement in. And then I get a positive mat inside my square root. And the nice thing is, nature, the universe, the physics was telling me, you've done something wrong. If I get a glitch on my calculator, Abe, I don't freak out. Instead, I say, probably I better go double check. I've made probably a very subtle common error. Uh, 10.4 seconds. How fast? OK, they want. Uh, now, I could go v final equals v initial plus a t. That's the easiest way to get there. The only risk with that, oh, and vi is 0. The only risk with that, Enzo, is I'm using t from part a. And if I got part a wrong, what does that guarantee? That I get part b wrong. So I have no problem if you do that. I'm going to go vf squared equals vi squared plus 2 a d. Oh, vi is 0. And how would I get rid of a squared? No, I won't divide by a squared. How do I get rid of a squared? Sorry? Square root. I'm going to go v equals big square root of 2 a d. It's going to be 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 533.3 square root. And if I use that, I get 102. And I'm wrong. This will get you a half mark. Why am I wrong? Rock's going down, so which what, negative. The only problem, Amanda, with this equation here, this the squared squared one, the vf squared equals vi squared plus 2, it's actually going to give you scalar velocities. And you will have, because when you square root, you lose any negatives that were there. So you got to then think uh, positive or negative. Now, by the way, just to double check, I'm going to go a times t. I'm going to go negative 9.8 times the time that I got in my first previous question, 10.4. And I got negative 102 as well. You know what that means? I got A right as well. Woohoo! I know I'm getting it right. Number five. 
How many times farther does a, folly, a freely falling object fall in 10 seconds than in one second? I don't know if I'm going to ask you this specifically on your test. I threw this in mostly because I'm a nerd. I was kind of curious, okay, in 10 seconds, does it fall 10 times further? And it turns out it doesn't, by the way. First thing you have to do, though, Greg, is figure out how the heck I can answer this. Greg, suppose you have five bucks. I got 50 bucks. How many times more do I have than you? How many times more, folks? If he's got five and I got 50, how many times more do I have? Sorry? 10. How did you get that? How can I take a 50 and a five and do some math so that the answer is 10? 50 divided by five. You know what? How many times farther does it fall in 10 seconds than in one second? I think, Jordan, I'm going to go the distance in 10 divided by the distance in one. How many times further? What is the distance in 10? It's going to be a half a t squared divided by a half a t squared, except this is time one second, this is time 10 seconds. What happened to the vit? What's vi? It's going to be a half times negative 9.8 times 10 squared, which is 490, I think negative, all over a half times negative 9.8 times 1 squared, which is uh, negative 4.9. I think when you divide them, you get 100 times further, which is kind of counterintuitive. Cliff, a lot of people will say, oh, in 10 seconds, it'll fall 10 times further than 1 second, because 10 is 10 times bigger than 1. Actually, it falls 100 times further. Why? Because it's accelerating the whole time. It's accelerating the whole time. Okay. Do you guys have a test next class? Yeah. Then I want you to hang on to these to study from. I'm not going to collect these. You can give yourself a score just for your own personal gratification, but I'm not going to give you marks for this. Can you get out this one here, unit two, quiz number four? This bad boy. Find it, and then I'm going to pause for a second. Quiz four. Again, mark your own. Oh, yeah, we did a thing on uh, period and frequency. We brought up the ticker tape timers. Um, Fan blade rotates 480 times in 45 seconds. What's the period? What's the frequency? I'm going to go, how about like this? And I'll do period, then frequency. Period. The symbol for period was capital T. Although if you use a letter P, I'm not going to freak out. But P is taken by something else later on this year. Uh, period is measured in seconds, which means if I'm going to figure this out, Roy, I think I want the 45 seconds on the top and the 480 times on the bottom, because the units I'm going to get are how many seconds for one time, which is what the period means. It's 45 divided by 480. It's going to be pretty small. 0 0.0937, I'll go 0 0.094. 0 0.094 seconds. That's how long it takes the fan to go around once. That seems fast. Wait a minute. No, fans go pretty fast, don't they? Like it's not like you can stick your finger in there. Greg says, yeah, I've tried. Oh, OK. Um, uh, oh, frequency. There's two ways to find the frequency. If you know the period, you could just go 1 divided by the period. Or frequency is how many times in one second. It's going to be or 480 times in 45 seconds should tell me how many times in one second. But I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to go 1 divided by th that. Uh, frequency is 10.7. Who remembers the funky units for frequency? Hertz. It hurts. Pardon me? Yeah, well, I really prefer 10.67. Round off properly, please. It's not 10.66, it's 10.667, or right? The next digit is always bigger than 5. Round off properly. 
How far would a cat running at 12 meters per second run at a time of 2.5 minutes? Nice try. Not going to get me with the minutes. Two and a half minutes. Well, I know two minutes is 120 seconds. I know a half minute is 30 seconds. So I'm pretty sure there's 150 seconds, or you could times that by 60 if you needed to. Uh, they want a distance. Have they mentioned an acceleration here at all? Then I'm going to use d equals vit plus a half a t squared, but the acceleration is 0. It's going to be 12 times 150 seconds. Eighteen hundred meters. Now the physics here is good. Jamie, I looked at this and I went, so you're telling me this cat ran just about two kilometers straight without stopping at twelve meters a second? That's first of all a very scared cat. Radioactive cat? Yeah, that could be. Um, anyhow, I don't know how realistic this is in real life. Number three, a racing car travels 560 kilometers in 3.2 hours. Calculate the car's average speed in meters per second. Okay. You know what? I'll crunch it in kilometers per hour first, and then I'll change that to meters per second. I could, Jordan, if I wanted to, change this to meters, change that to seconds, and then happy joy. Eh, that's too much work. You see, I know another way to measure speed is in kilometers per hour. Another way to measure speed is going to be in 560 kilometers, 3.2 hours, which is 175 kilometers per hour. But I want to change that to meters per second. I remember Mr. Duick saying it had something to do with the 3.6. Do I times by 3.6 or do I divide by 3.6? Nothing? That was a good one. I've got a little after effect there. How do you know? I always fall. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, I'll fall back to the 100 kilometers because can you do math with 100 in your head? It's a fairly nice one to times and multiply. So uh, 100 kilometers per hour, which is the freeway, if I times by 3.6, I get 360 meters a second, which would mean that every second you'd be pass passing three fields, three farm fields a second. I've driven on the freeway. I don't pass three farm fields every second, assuming a farm field is about 100 meters long, which is roughly. Yep. So I think it's divided by, uh, you know what? How about 48.6 meters per second. Now everyone's looking around. Back here. Um, I like number four. I like number four, but I'm not saying I like number four, I like number four. I might. I, I just like number four because it's, it's got a nice little twist to it. It says, on a certain day, sound travels through the air at a speed of 340 meters per second. You shout while facing a distant cliff, and 8.6 seconds later, you hear the echo of your voice. Calculate the distance to the cliff. OK, this is a brand new one. I haven't tried this one. I am going to defic here, Jacob. I'll be a little bit careful. So 340, what's that? Velocity, which velocity, initial or final? In fact, you know what? I'm pretty sure sound doesn't accelerate. I think sound hits full speed right away and stays full speed, as long as you're not going from one medium to another, as long as you're not going the sound from air to the sound through water to the sound through w or whatever. I think sound in the same substance doesn't accelerate. So I'm going to just say, yeah, you know what? I'm pretty sure V equals 340. What are they asking us to find here? What's the time? Why is 8.6 wrong? Oh, Doug, what? That's the time it took for there and back. So I got two options. I can go and then divide this answer by 2. So I can go 330 
times 8.6 and then just divide that by 2 to get there. Or I could divide the time in 2 ahead of time. I could put a 4.3 in. I'm going to go 330 times 8.6, 340 times 8.6. I'll change that here too. I'm used to using 330. Actually, I'm used to using 333 because it's a really easy number to remember and it's very close to the actual answer. Tricks of the trade to memorize certain key physics concepts. Memorize stuff that's really not... Hey, G is negative 9.8 and it's 10 if I'm doing the math in my head, right? Uh, 340. So I get uh, 2924. And then if I divide by 2... The distance one way is 1,462 meters. meters. Sorry? Years meters. meters. I think I said meters. Okay. Basically, four seconds is about one and a half kilometers. How many of you have ever seen lightning before? How many of you, as soon as you see the lightning, start to count to figure out how far away the thunder is? So I grew up in the pre-metric era, so when I count, I know five seconds is one mile. What is it for uh, meters and things? If every second was a kilometer, what would the speed of sound be that I just gave you in this question? How many meters per second if every second was a kilometer? A thousand meters per second. Is it the speed of sound a thousand meters per second? In fact, it's almost exactly one third of that. Every second is about a third of a kilometer, or every three seconds is a kilometer. If you're a nerd like me, and especially because there was that spectacular lightning and hailstorm just a couple of days ago, right? You guys saw that? As soon as there's lightning, I gotta I'm start counting right away. You may recall last year. We had lightning strike just down below there, right? And set something on fire. That one, oh yeah, that one shook the building enough that the custodians went outside to go, because we thought the lamp posts had been hit. Yeah, hit a chimney. We thought the, the, the fields, lamp po the light posts had been hit. Pardon me? So why should that make a difference? What's the physics there? Pardon me? Electricity tries to find the closest way to the ground. Fastest way to the ground. Way to the ground. You're, you're mostly right. If you take physics 12, we'll actually spend a day looking at what's going on in electricity. And you can actually treat a cloud as though it's an electric plate. And uh, you'll find that it has to do with how big an electric field you need for the air to start ionizing. And it does have a distance in the equation. And it turns out the smaller the distance, the less electric field you need for air to start ionizing and passing electrons along. So why, why did it hit up here? Like, why, why did it hit down there instead of up here? Why did it hit down there instead of up here? Yeah. Uh, it could very well be that the cloud was over there, and so the distance straight down was shorter than diagonally. Mm -hmm. Okay. De it, de it depends. Uh, we really don't have a great understanding of lightning. In fact, only. Uh, in the last 10 years, have we come up with an explanation for how the clouds get charged in the first place? Because when our previous explanation, when we crunched the numbers, we said, well, this sounds good in theory, but when we crunched the numbers, there's no way the clouds could build up that big a charge. So there's got to be some, there has to be some sort of outside energy source somewhere. And so currently we think it's uh, cosmic rays uh, hitting cloud particles and charging them up. We think Uh, anyways, 1462. Uh, a girl out for some exercise jogs at 5.1 meters per second for 1.5 minutes and then walks at 2.5 meters per second for 12 minutes. Find her average speed. Okay. If they have two different speeds and they want me to find the average, I think what I'm going to end up doing is this. I think I'm going to say the average speed is the total distance divided by total time. How far she covered and how long it took her. So 
So let's see. In the first situation, we have a velocity of 5.1 meters per second and a time of 90 seconds, 1.5 minutes. And so, Matt, in the first situation, she travels VT, she travels 5.1 times 90. I think she travels 459, 5.1 times 90, 459 meters. In the second situation, she travels at a speed of 2.5 meters per second, but her time is 12 minutes, 12 minutes, 12 minutes, uh, 12 times 60, 720 seconds. In the second situation, she travels 1,800 meters. If I want her average velocity for this whole trip, she traveled 459 plus 1,800 meters in a time of 90 plus 720. You know what? Her average speed was about 2.79, 2.8 meters per second. There may be other ways to get there. That gets me there fairly cleanly. Relative velocity. How do I know number six is relative velocity? Two things moving with different speeds. What do they ask me to find in number six? How long? What have they given me? They've given me that the relative velocity is 12 meters per second. And the distance that we have to travel, so not 12, Mr. B yeah, 12, no, 8 meters per second, Mr. Duick, good gosh. 8 meters per second, the distance we're going to travel is 12 meters. I don't think we're accelerating, so I think I can say this. The time is going to be the distance divided by the velocity. It's going to be 12 divided by 8, divided by 4, 3, divided by You get uh, 1.5 seconds. Uh, that means if the rabbit is closer than 1.5 seconds to its burrow, it's alive. If it's further than 1.5 seconds, it's going to get eaten. Turn the page. I like number seven. I like number seven. I like number seven. Number seven is a nice question. It's cops and robbers! The police are chasing a car which is 180 meters ahead and going 160 kilometers per hour. If the police are going to catch up in 4.8 seconds, what must their velocity be? Are there two things moving? This looks like a job for relative velocity. What I'm going to do, Greg, is I'm going to start out pretending that everything's standing still. Oh, and they want my final answer in kilometers per hour? I'll convert my final answer. So I'm going to start out by saying, initially, if everything's standing still, we have 4.8 seconds to travel 180 meters. I want to know how fast that takes. That's going to be the relative velocity the police have to be traveling at. The relative velocity is going to be the distance divided by the time. It's going to be 180 divided by 4.8. And I get, you know what? We need to be traveling at 37.5 meters per second if they're standing still. Really, uh, Brad, it's, it means relative to the bad guys, we need to be going 37.5 meters per second faster than them except their speed is given in kilometers per hour. OK. I think we times by 3.6 to get kilometers per hour. I've got to be going 135 kilometers per hour. Now, that's if the thieves are standing still. Are the thieves standing still? How fast are they going, Amanda? Ah, that means the police 
are going to have to go 135 plus 160. They're going to have to go, holy smokes, 295 kilometers per hour if they're planning on catching the bad guys. Pardon me? In 4.8, that, that'll catch them in exactly 4.8 seconds. Is that okay? And is there a number eight? Nope. You guys have a test next class? So I'm not going to collect this quiz either. This is purely for your own personal edification, and you can hang on to this to study from. What else did I give you last class? Well, last class I also gave you this little chapter review. Nick and Brad, did I give it to you? Did you get it or not? I gave it to you, but you left it at home and no. Can you get this thing out, please? So a quick reminder, uh, I said cross out number one, number four. I added one more to cross out. You can cross out number 10. I don't like the acceleration. It says negative five kilometers per hour per second. I'm not a big fan of those units. And we nuked number 14 and number 17. And then there's a second page. After the answers, you'll see another page called, uh, well, it looks like this, yes? Okay. So these are also, this is part of your homework that is due the day of the test. Uh, one is fair game, two, three, four, five is fair game. Number six, you can cross out C, D, E, and F. You can cross out number seven. You can cross out number 13. And that's a pretty good summary of everything we've done so far this unit. Very last thing, on Friday, so your test is Thursday, on Friday I'll be giving you the class to prepare for your balloon car racers. The balloon car racers will be due on Monday. You can work with a partner, you can work by yourself, you can, uh, sorry, Tuesday, 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 or you could, Tuesday, Tuesday, a week from today, Tuesday. You work on them Friday, they're due Tuesday. Race day will be Tuesday. I will give you about a half an hour to practice that on the race day to do some fine tuning, and then we'll have a race off. You can be groups of one or two or three. They must be balloon powered, and that is really the main restriction. Okay? Brad, you can go. Yeah.